So if you have a vehicle and you think you have a bad starter, I thought I'd go over the symptoms of a bad starter and how you go about testing it to find out if it has gone bad. And so what are some symptoms of a bad starter? Well, first of all, the engine won't turn over. So if it's not turning over, it's not or anything like that, then that's a symptom of a bad starter. Sometimes there can also be a slow crank. So if the engine is turning over, but it's going very slow, which is like that, then that could be a sign of a bad starter. There can also be unusual noises sometimes when you go to start the car. So if you're hearing like a clinking or a grinding or some kind of whirring noise, something along those lines, then that's another symptom. Sometimes the starter can have intermittent problems too. So sometimes the vehicle could start and then other times it won't. And sometimes the starter could be doing like a free spin. So when you go to start the vehicle, you can hear the starter spinning, but the motor's not turning. And there's a few different things that could cause those symptoms. So I'm going to go over the steps how you could troubleshoot the starter and find out if it has gone bad. And so the basics of how the starter works is it's basically just an electrical motor that's connected to the battery that'll spin the engine when it gets power and it needs a lot of power to do this and so there'll be one big wire going to what's called the starter solenoid the ground side is when it's bolted into the engine so when it's bolted into the engine with the bolts that'll be the ground but a big cable coming from the battery is going to be bolted right onto the starter solenoid because that motor needs a lot of power to spin the engine and so to manage this big amp load that the starter needs there's a starter solenoid and it's basically like a switch that'll just shut and turn on that starter when it's enabled. The starter solenoid just sits right on top of the starter and it's gonna have a small wire going to it. And like I said, it's basically like a switch. When it gets power, when it gets 12 volts, it'll complete the circuit and it'll send that big amp load of power that the starter requires to turn the engine. And the starter solenoid is enabled when the key goes into position, it'll usually go to a relay and then sometimes it'll go to a safety neutral switch and things like this and it'll send power to that starter solenoid. And then send power to that starter, which will turn the engine. And so the first thing to go and check is going to be the battery because you're going to need power to the starter for it to work. And so go check out the battery. Be sure all the terminals look like they're good, that they're not dirty, they're not corroded, anything like this. Any bad connections is going to cause a problem for that starter to get power. So check out those connections real good. Be sure they're not corroded. And that is a very common problem is that the battery terminals are just corroded or they're just old and they're not making a good connection. So the first thing is go examine those battery cables and be sure they look good. The next thing you can do is use a multimeter and test the battery voltage. The battery voltage should be at least like 12.40 or so. If it gets up around 12.6, 12.7, and that's really good. But it should be like at least 12.4 volts. If it's not at least that voltage, then there might be some kind of issue with the battery. It might be bad or it might just need a charge. If it does fall below that, then put it on a battery charger and charge it for like at least an hour and see if it's holding the charge. You can also take it out and take it to like an automotive store. They'll usually test them for free. But the first thing to do is test that battery and be sure you're getting at least 12.40 volts. You can also test the battery when you go to start it and if it drops below 9 volts. And so with the multimeter connected, if you have somebody to help you, have them turn the key and the battery voltage will drop. But if it drops below 9 volts, then that's not enough for that starter to usually work. And at that point, be sure to take the battery in and get it tested. The next thing that could be done is you could check to see if the solenoid is getting 12 volts when the key is in the position. And it can vary on the vehicle. Sometimes this could be kind of hard to do. Sometimes it could be hard to get to the starter solenoid wire. It's really going to vary. Sometimes they're easy to get to, sometimes they're hard. But if you could check the wire going to the starter solenoid, it should be getting 12 volts when the vehicle goes to start. So if you take the wire off going to the starter solenoid and you test it for voltage, when the key is in the start position and it should be turning the starter over, you should be getting 12 volts to that wire. If you're not getting 12 volts to that wire, then that could be something like a bad safety neutral switch or a bad relay or possibly even the vehicle immobilizer or something like that. So if you're not getting 12 volts down to that starter solenoid, then it's something inside the wiring between the battery, the key, and the key going down to the solenoid. And it wouldn't have anything to do with the starter. If you do all those tests and they all show good and you're not having no issues there, then it's also possible that the wire running down to the starter is having an issue or you're having a ground issue when it bolts onto the case for some reason. And the check for those things, usually a voltage drop test is done. But basically when you do that, you're checking to be sure that the starter is getting a good ground when it's bolted onto the case and you're checking to be sure that the cable running from the positive side of the battery to the starter all has a good connection. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to go over the symptoms of a bad starter and how you go about testing to see if it has failed. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.